Today we celebrate one of the great 12 feasts of the church year. Today we remember when the Theotokos, our Panagia, entered into the temple as a small child. If we look at the entire story of salvation as a day, the feast of today is like those early hours of the morning right before the sun begins to peak over the horizon. All that which will lead to our salvation is at this moment being put into movement. And thus in the hymn we hear that it is the prelude of our salvation. Joachim and Anna were elderly, faithful Israelites. They had no children, and they desired to have children. They desired to have a child not for so many of the reasons that humans have throughout history had children. Joachim was not seeking a son to inherit his land or property or title or name. Anna was not looking for a child that she could somehow shape and form into her own image. But rather, Joachim and Anna, in their righteousness, realized the great truth that all that we have is a gift from God. And if we desire to give anything to God, it can only be from that which he first has given to us. Joachim and Anna desired a child that they may offer this very child to God. Joachim and Anna were out praying separately, beseeching our Lord for this very thing. Both independently making the vow that if a child was given to them, when this child each reached the age of three, they would bring her or him to the temple to serve the Lord. And so they had a child. And they named her Mary. And she has become for us the Theotokos, the mother and God-bearer. And our Panagia, the All-Holy One. And when she reached the age of three, in fulfillment of their vow, they brought her to the temple. And we must perhaps ask ourselves at this point, how did they feel? How did they feel to have finally received this child and at the age of three to let her go? For the first time, I'm celebrating this feast as a father. And the thought of being apart from my child for three hours is difficult, let alone to completely let go and offer that child to God. And yet Joachim, Joachim was a true priest, a true priest who understood that in this offering, in this letting go of what God had given to him, God would more richly bless him and more importantly, bless all others. Perhaps when Joachim brought the Theotokos and they were standing at the stairs of the temple, he said the words that we pre-say at every divine liturgy. Your own of your own we offer to you. For he recognized his child as a gift. How did Anna feel? How broken hearted was this mother when she offered up her child? And yet Anna had faith 
faith that was a living trust, a trust that this child that this child would be without a mother there in the temple. It would be provided for and watched over by the living God himself. The Lord received the gift of their daughter. And all of creation was saved, was blessed, was made new. The second part of that prayer that we pre-say is, Your own of your own we offer to you in all and for all. The Lord gave them a child and they offered him their daughter. And through this very gift, he has given to us his son. A daughter for a son, a son for a daughter. And his son received a mother. He who before all time was born of a father without a mother for the first time, had a mother. The king, who had no city, enters into his city. And we, who had been orphaned for so long, in Christ have received a father. My friends, this is not merely a beautiful story. It's not even just that prologue or prelude to our salvation that I spoke of. This, my dear friends, is the very meaning of life itself. This is the very purpose of creation. This is why you were born. This is why all that has happened to you has happened. All that has been given to you has been given. that we might take it and offer it to God. Do not cling to what has been given to you, but let it go, as did Joachim. Have faith of Anna, that even when you experience loss, That if you offer in thanksgiving, more will be gained. Today is Stewardship Sunday, in which we, the clergy, the church, the parish council, request that each person step forward and make a commitment of what they will offer in the upcoming year to the church. A commitment of treasure, a commitment of time, a commitment of talent. Something that we hear again and again every year. And this is good. But more importantly, perhaps than this idea of stewardship, is this idea that when each and every one of you was baptized and chrismated, you became part of this royal priesthood in which it is your duty to take all that God has given to you, each and every gift, and to offer it back to him. That whatever we have finds its meaning, finds its eternal identity when it is brought into communion and relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I will conclude by reminding you all that this is not something that we merely speak about each Sunday, or for that matter, only on Stewardship Sunday. But this is the very reality that we live each and every time we celebrate the Divine Liturgy. We receive the gift of the bread and wine. In a moment, we are going to process and we're going to offer it to God. 
But here I would remind you that it's not merely a, a small piece of bread or a small cup of wine that we are giving to God. But rather, wine and bread are the symbols of life itself. And more than just life, the symbol of labor, the work that goes into taking the grain and making it into flour and to bread. It's a symbol of our culture and society that can take the blood of the grape and turn it into wine. And so when we bring this offering each Sunday, we are offering our very lives, but also our labor, our work, our culture, all of our talents and gifts. And God, each and every liturgy, receives the gift. And he takes that very gift and he returns it to us. No longer as corruptible bread and wine, but as the very body and blood of his son. And we receive it within us. And we give unto God living temples. A professor of mine once said, that at every divine liturgy, we, the broken people of God, receive the king who had been broken for us as broken bread. And in this great movement, in this great liturgy, where all this brokenness comes together, all is made whole. May Christ our God continue to bless us and this community as he so abundantly has. And may we, in return, offer to him these very gifts. For Christ our God is holy now and forever. Amen.